Good morning, everybody. I hope you're having a great day. My name's Cody, and I want to thank you so much for stopping by today. Going to be a, uh, a really awesome day today. What I'm going to be working on is trying to incorporate, or I guess help out, um, more of the wildlife in and around the property, in and around the garden, and um, trying to give them just a little bit more um, balance, I guess, back in the garden. You know, we, we spend so much time manicuring and primping and prepping and making things look nice for us, but what I want to do today is just give back a little bit to uh, the nature that also calls this garden home. So I've got two things I'm going to work on today. The first one is I'm going to be setting up a mason bee habitat. I've got a hundred mason bee cocoons that I'm going to let go. So I've got to build a house for them and get them all set up. And the second thing we're going to work on today is building two wildlife ponds out of uh, old whiskey barrels. So I've got both of those projects here ready to go. I can't wait to get started. Like I say, it's just going to be so nice to help incorporate a little bit more of that natural feeling into our gardens. You know, I think that's a really big part of um, living in balance with what we're doing here you know that's uh, that's fantastic so let's get uh let's get going on that so mason bees are native to north america now before um, honeybees were introduced to north america mason bees and bees like that were the only thing around here in north america we didn't actually have a honeybee until uh, they were brought over so there's a big movement nowadays you know to save the bees which i think is a great movement but uh, the honeybees, their PR team has just been phenomenal in supporting them, if that makes any sense. So there's no, there's not as, as pressing of an issue to save the honeybees. I mean, of course, they, they are still affected by, you know, chemical usage and those sorts of things, habitat loss. But um, the native bees, I think, really get um, the short end of the stick on that. They don't produce honey, so I think humans, for the most part, don't see them as being um, as big of a contributor to our lives. But that's not necessarily true because all of North America was pollinated by mason bees and bees like that uh, well before honeybees ever came onto the scene. So um, I've got some cocoons here. Sorry, the camera's focusing weird. I don't know if uh, this will show or not, but these are... Come on, there we go. Oh, there we go. These are mason bee cocoons. Now they're just fascinating little creatures. They're solitary bees and they're not uh, not aggressive they're very friendly they feed on the pollen rather than the nectar and they can be over a hundred times more efficient at pollinating our plants than honeybees can so i think that's just a huge benefit to the garden here to to help everything in, in general just um have more of a natural ecosystem which is really what we're trying to create here so I'm going to get these guys a home and I've got a little creative solution that I'm going to work on for that and uh, yeah I think native bees are fantastic if you can add them feel free you know definitely it's a good idea to add them to uh, your yard you know you don't need a big hive you don't need a lot of equipment like you would say with honeybees they're just um, get some cocoons and you let them out and they do their own thing they're they're fantastic so let's go get their house built though you can buy um, mason bee houses at uh, you know garden centers at grocery stores there are these little uh, house silhouettes almost and bamboo uh, shafts or sticks or whatever you want to call them are in there now mason bees will uh, go into those little holes and that's where they'll make their house and they're called mason bees because they use mud uh, like a mason would to create uh, little chambers for them to lay their eggs in. So all we need to do really is provide our bees with that little tube structure to lay their eggs in and build their little houses. So now what I thought of doing was, you know, just buying a commercial one or getting some bamboo and using bamboo because that's, you know, what we see a lot of. But what I kind of, I came to the conclusion that I'm going to try to stick to something that's a little bit more local, well, a lot more local, and natural, and renewable, and free, which is always really good. So, let me show you what I'm talking about. So we need to find something that is naturally grown here, but also has that tubular shape. And when I was out checking on the rhubarb, um, I didn't cut down the flower stalks last year, and let me show you. Let me pull one out here. This is a used, or spent rather, rhubarb flower stalk. Now if I break this open, let's see here, you will notice, I don't know if it'll show up on camera there or not, but these are actually hollow. Oh, let's see. Oh, there we go. You can see daylight through the end there. So this, I think, should be an ideal nesting material 
For the mason bees, we have it in abundance because I didn't cut down the stalks last year, which is good. And uh, yeah, I can reuse this every year, you know, whether making new ones or just the same old ones. Um, they're completely natural, they're environmental, they didn't have to have a big carbon footprint to get here, and I think they're just going to be a great substitute for a bee house. So I'm going to gather up some of these stalks, tie them together, and then that's our mason bee house. So let's, uh, let's do that. <sighs> So there we go, took, uh, let's see, 25, 30 seconds to get this uh, all picked and harvested here. So I'm gonna go find a table and uh, get these cut to length and then back out to the bees. I got all those uh, tubes cut up here and ready to go. So the last thing I need to do is tie them up. So I've got a little bit of jute twine here. I'm gonna give a couple wraps of that, get this nice and tight, and then go set it outside for those uh, mason bees to go find. So let's get this thing tied up. Well, wasn't that just the easiest thing ever, you know? It uh, went super quick, and uh, I've seen a few of those bee houses at stores and stuff like that, and I have an idea as to what uh, they're, they're going for as far as what the bees need, and I think this suits the purpose quite well. Very rudimentary. I think you can see there, though, there's lots of little natural crevices and holes for those bees to go into to lay their eggs. And uh, the best part, like I say, is it's something that I had on hand, it was free. It's already part of this uh, garden, so it's uh, not, you know, bringing in anything that you don't want brought in, and also it's a zero carbon footprint too, you know, it doesn't have to be shipped in from places that can grow bamboo. But I know that can't always be the case with everything that we do, but I think every little step that we can take to uh, reduce that impact is going to be great, not only for our gardens, but uh, for everyone's garden, right? So if you do have some bamboo, or not bamboo, rather, some uh, rhubarb flower stalks, and you want to get into mason bees, or even just building you know, a bug house or whatever. It's a great uh, material. Well, it's great so far. The The jury's still out, right? Because we don't know if they're going to like it and how it's going to go this year. So the first year we do it is always good just to kind of get a test, see how it goes, and then we can make improvements and adjustments as we need to. But I think that this will serve our purposes really, really well. I'm hopeful that they like it. And just another great little addition to our garden here. So let's go set it out for the bees. And there we go, about a hundred cocoons all out and getting some fresh air. So I'm going to leave these guys covered in this box. Uh, I'll leave it open just a little bit and I'll show you what I mean. So close the lid. I'm going to leave uh, that opening for them to be able to get in and out, but it'll keep birds from getting in there. And I'm going to probably place it under these tree, maybe right there. And then with their little house, I'll place that right here. There. I don't know if you can see that or not. And uh, yeah, so that'll give the bees a good head start. They can go out and start getting some food and water, getting everything that they need, also while being really close to their home. So I'm going to check on them maybe later today to see if anybody's woken up yet. But um, we'll leave them to do their thing right now, and let's go start on those wildlife ponds. Now we're going to work on our wildlife ponds. So when I picked these barrels up, they were as dry as can be. And what happens then is the wood shrinks or contracts, right? And these metal bands, they are just held on by pressure or tension alone. They're not attached to the barrel. So when the wood shrinks, they contract and then the metal rings slip off and then the barrel essentially falls apart because there's no nails, there's no glue, it's just tension that holds these barrels together. So I have had to soak these in water. I've done that for a couple of days. Um, I'd highly recommend if you're picking out barrels for this project to try to find ones that are already uh, that were not dried out basically so if you can find one that has nice clean staves on it that have um, all of their lines there's no you can't see any sunlight through them that's going to save you a big uh, a big step in having to get these guys rehydrated and uh, go from there so I still have to do a, a, a lot of hammering to get these metal rings back into place. Once we get them hammered in, then I'm gonna go through with some self-tapping metal screws and then affix this metal band to the wood itself. So that way, if in the future it ever dries out again or it shrinks or whatever the case may be, 
the metal bands are attached to the wood. But in the meantime, I'm going to hammer these uh, rings back into place. I've got a railroad spike, I guess you'd call it, and a hammer. And I'm just going to tap, 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 get this metal ring back in place because I can see it slipped maybe about a quarter inch. So I want to get that put back into place so it's as tight as possible. Once that's done, I'm going to fill them up, see if they hold water. If they hold water, then we can go on to the final phase, which is filling them up in their permanent place, getting them planted, and then giving them back to Mother uh, Nature. So let's get, uh, let's get tippy tapping. <laughs> There we go, that was pretty straightforward. So these screws, I've got uh, three per band, and then so six screws total. That is, is more than you'll need for sure. Just wanna make sure that these metal bands don't move again, because there's nothing more annoying than when these dry out, and you've gotta re-season them, re-get them uh, moistened, and then try to get the, uh, yeah, these metal bands back in place. So that's all taken care of now. I'm gonna go uh, uh, screw up. <laughs> I'm gonna go put screws in the other barrel there and then move these to their new spot. So let's get, uh, let's get screwing. <laughs> let's get some screws in that barrel. Well, I've had them sitting here with water now for a little bit. The water level has not dropped. So all that hammering has definitely paid off. I think for the most part, they are sealed now. Uh, they'll still, you know, um, what do they call it when they're making whiskey? Called the angel share. So uh, just evaporation through the actual wood itself. But um, I think they're, all intents and purposes they are watertight for our use or our need and yeah we can get them set up in their final location we can get the plants put in there and we can get them ready to go so let's get these guys drained and moved out to the new home right. looks like I could tip it boy oh boy that was uh, that was heavy oh it smokes I decided to keep the barrels together. I think it'll just be a little bit more impactful as a feature to the garden to keep uh, them together. So I've decided to do that. Now, what I have to do next is get it planted. These water plants come in, uh, you know, they're little pots like any other plant does, but uh, they have different zones on them. So that means just basically how deep they can be or how submerged they can be. Most of them want to be submerged, but not completely, right? So you don't want them sitting at the bottom of your barrel because they won't survive. So I'm going to use some leftover five gallon pails from other projects that I've had and put that upside down in the barrel and then set the plant on top of that, just to raise it up a little bit. And uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm pretty sure I have way too many plants for these barrels, but that's okay, it, I think it'll fill in quite nicely. So uh, this barrel's still filling up, but I'm gonna get this one started here, so let's get planted. There we go, the wildlife ponds are done. I'm gonna keep a close eye on them, just to make sure that they're not losing too much water in case they've, you know, um, lost their seal or whatever. So the next day or two, I'm just gonna come back, make sure that that water level is nice and high. After that, you know, once everything kind of tightens up there, we shouldn't have to worry about that at all, which is great. The, the last thing, like I say, after everything's all planted here and they just sit like this for the rest of the summer, so there's no need to do anything with them. And I'm just excited to see, you know, these things kind of do what they're going to do today. The last thing, and probably one of the most important things, when you're setting up one of these ponds is we typically do this uh, maybe for enjoyment you know if there's some water plants and you don't have you know a backyard that has a pond or you don't want that cost this was maybe a hundred bucks each all in so a little bit more affordable than like redoing your backyard uh, so that's one reason but the main reason I think most people will put these in is for the benefit of the local wildlife whether that's the birds in your area uh, or insects that can come and drink from here if they need to but we wanna make sure that this is as safe as possible for those creatures that use it. Uh, what I'm getting at basically is if anything were to fall in here, say like a little mouse uh, or a bird or anything like that, they need to have a way to get out. The easiest way to do that is to add a stick. Now they're cheap, easy to come by, and you can probably find them wherever you're at. And we want a stick that goes in and is nice and secure, and they can climb onto 
if they need to uh, to climb out for whatever reason so if you're doing this I definitely it's not even a recommendation just do it make sure that they've got a ramp or a stick or something that they can climb onto and get out of there the last thing you want to do is come in one morning and find some poor creature you know didn't survive the night so just keep that in mind when you're setting one of these up but uh, right now they're pretty much done they're very straightforward and I'm super happy to have got it done so that's pretty much it. I'm going to leave it there for today, guys. But I want to thank you so much for following along with me, and I hope you got some enjoyment out of this. I'm uh, going to check on those bees in a little bit just to see how they're doing. But, um, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. So have a great rest of your day there, guys. Whatever it is that you get up to, I hope you have a great time. So take care, and until next time, we'll see you later. Bye now. like one of our mason bees has already woken up. I made a promise to myself to not bug these guys for a little while but I just came back to have a quick look and I see one little guy here and then if we go slowly over here there is another one. He's just walking around there now looking at his new home. Can you see that? Oh my gosh. They are so cool.